Hey, what's up YouTube, Lightsaber Samurai here. I'm back again with another video. And this time I got a special guest with me that is a cruise from the YouTube channel, A Winner Is You. So you guys know the deal. Leave links in the description below. Check the channel out, hit them with a sub, tell them the Lightsaber Samurai sent you. But today we are joining forces to talk about some very good games with some rather bad graphics. So without further ado, Mr. Cruz, you take it away and let's talk about it. Hey everyone, this is A Cruz from A Winner Is You. And my three picks for games that have ugly graphics but have really great gameplay are these. First for my picks is this one here, Monkey Magic for the Sony PlayStation. And this is a 2.5D action platformer. Um, it's based off of a syndicated cartoon from the mid 90s. And man, I love playing this game. Like the game is challenging. And when it comes to 2D games, you always wanted to have a certain level of difficulty. So this one didn't disappoint, but man, is it ugly. Like, ugh. the game is 2.5D, so it has multiple planes, like foreground and background. The way that they drew the graphics, it, it, um, it's like polygons with like really, really primitive texture mapping. So I like, it didn't really mesh well with the 2D sprites. The 2D sprites are like pixelated to the ninth degree, really blocky on the edges. And on top of that, the textures were just so primitive. I just, uh, like, I, I wish it looked better. I wish, um, I probably could convert it into a Bleemcast copy and see if it'll, you know, the resolution will make it look better. But man, the texture mapping in this game is horrible. Okay, so for my first game, I am going to hop on the Xbox 360, and this is one that we mentioned on the channel uh, before. Uh, definitely a true hidden gem on the system and fantastic real-time strategy game by the boys at Atlas, and that is... Operation Darkness. Now this game takes place during uh, a fictional version of World War II and you play as a group that's, you know, basically sent down to bring down the Nazi regime. Uh, the cool thing about this game and what makes it unique is although it's, <clears throat> excuse me, although it's set in World War II, you've got a lot of fantasy elements into it. People who are uh, werewolves and people who are vampires and things like that perfect for Halloween um, you know uh, enemies can summon the undead and you'll fight zombies and skeletons alongside um, fighting you know the Wehrmacht and things like that uh, most of the weapons are conventional World War II era you've got Mulls and the Gots, M1 Garens, Lee Enfields all of the you know standard flavors of weapons that we use in the Call of Duty games but in addition to that you also get um, access to things like transformations and using magic and superpowers and things like that and that really uh, mixes the game up and it's a ton of fun to play uh, it actually kind of reminds me I mentioned this before that reminds me a lot of Valkyria Chronicles on the PlayStation 3 and so um, yeah this is all in all a great game the graphics however the graphics are very very poor in my opinion and just lazily done I mean you can see them here you can look at the resolution it it looks like a PlayStation 2 game. It doesn't even look like a seventh generation game. Um, you know, poor te textures and kind of drab colors uh, throughout, but that was kind of common during the generation. But um, all in all, still, the graphics aren't enough to bring this game down, in my opinion. This game is fantastic, and unfortunately, it's rising in price. I was able to snag it up for about five bucks about a year ago, but now this is hovering around the $40, $50 mark again. Uh, so if you see it, or if you, and especially if you see it for cheap, definitely pick it up. It's definitely a worthy addition, especially if you're into real-time strategy games. I'm not sure if anybody really talks about this one, but this one is Under the Skin from Capcom. For the PlayStation 2. Now, um, man, this is a really good game. Like the the reason why I like this game was the just the the idea of it. Like you play as an alien, um, you take over people's bodies, and um, you have to perform like these little practical jokes to get money and stuff like that. And I could see 
where they had like they, they try to draw the graphics like beautiful Joe, like you know, like that cell shaded look, but man, every time I played the game, I was just so disappointed, like, oh, they could have done this better, they could have done this better, they could have done this better. And the, this game actually deserves better. Like it does deserve a remake. It does it deserves an HD remake on top of that. But man, was it such an ugly game. I feel like they, you know, they just wanted a cash grab with this one. Like, they had a good idea, you know. It looked like, I don't know if Clover Studio were the ones that developed this, but it looks like they used their engine, but they really didn't use it to its um, full capability, or they handed it off to another studio, you know, inside the company to take care of this um, product. But man, was this, it's a great game. Um, I don't know if you find this game out there, I suggest you pick it up because it is a really good game. But man, you know, it's really ugly. Okay, for the next game, I'm heading to the Dreamcast on this one. And this is still a game that I have tons of fun playing even today. Um, a fantastic beat em up all around. That is Star Wars Jedi Power Battles. This also came out on the original PlayStation. And that's where I played it most at as an adult. And when, once I started collecting for the Dreamcast, this is one of the first games I picked up. Uh, this game fanta is fantastic. It takes place during the events of episode one, The Phantom Menace. You start off um, trying to escape the droid found or the, the Federation. Um, outside of Naboo and it just kind of goes through all the set pieces of the movie you'll visit feed and uh you'll end up in the reactor at the end and things like that so uh all in all standard beat em up but it's got the Star Wars aesthetic to it so that's definitely where it's at you'll play as a an assortment of Jedi uh not just Obi-Wan and, and Qui-Gon like in the movie but you can pick uh Plo Koon and uh Adi Galia I believe and Mace Windu is in here of course this is before episode two so Mace Windu still has a blue lightsaber instead of his um you know his famous purple lightsaber but it's still pretty dope though uh levels play out like i said very well um the only thing again is the graphics on this is they're kind of muddy they were not that great on the playstation and honestly this looks like the playstation version with just smoothing applied like the graphics they're not that great um especially when you were looking at dreamcast games that were coming out uh during the time there was a lot of really good looking dreamcast games and you know playstation 2 was around the the corner we were seeing some really good sixth generation uh graphics out the gate especially compared to the fifth generation but uh again this doesn't look that much better than the PlayStation version. There's also a lot of load times I can remember in this. It's just kind of in weird places, kind of mid-level. They'll kind of stop and load and things like that. So uh, it doesn't seem very well optimized for the system either. But again, that shouldn't deter you. This is tons of fun, especially if you can play co-op mode. This is one of, in my opinion, one of the all-time great co-op games of the era. And like I said, me and my brothers, we played a metric ton of this on the PlayStation 1, and it still plays better uh, on the Dreamcast. And honestly, I mean, despite its ugly graphics, the Dreamcast is the better looking version so that is the one you may want to get um both of them kind of hover around the 25 30 dollar mark and so I, I still think they're both worth uh putting in the collection the gameplay is just the standard uh 3d beat -em up formula and it still holds up even today so if you see jedi power battles definitely pick it up now the last one may upset some people but um I really enjoyed this game. I love the series. Um, for me to admit that this game is not really visually pleasing is something that I don't regret saying. I've said it from day one. There were, at the time, a lot of these games, this game came out when a lot of other games were like phenomenal looking. And the game is, Panzer Dragoon Saga. Yeah, I do not have a complete inbox copy, but man, Panzer Dragoon Saga was such a great game. I love the story, um, the gameplay, the, the timing, 
events. It's, it's, it's RPG, by the way. And um, when I popped in the first disc, this is like way back in the day. I got this game in the year 2000. And at the time, Final Fantasy IX came out. Um, I was already playing Dreamcast games. And I just, I guess I, get, I was, my, my vision was already distorted, but it's Panzer Dragoon, so I was still playing the other games on the Saturn, and those still look great to me. Like, the, the way that they did the models and stuff like that was really good. The, the resolution helped a lot in those older games. But this game was just drab in color, man. Like, lots of browns and blacks, and it's not like the, the the way that they used the palette was just horrible to me like everything just looks so desolate and bleak and it looked like that everywhere in every environment in this game um and the dragons like the dragons i felt like they um used less polygons for the, these models in this game or something because when i played this game it just didn't feel smooth to me it felt like it could have been done a lot better, but um, I guess the time constraints and the space, this game is four discs, so it's almost like maybe a gig in data or maybe even two gigs in data, which is why it's made in four CDs or something, but the gameplay is, it's one of the best RPGs I've ever played. The, uh, it had a good battle system, it had a timing system, like a ATB similar to Final Fantasy, but it has like three meters and depending on um, the attack that you choose, it would um, deplete one of the three meters. There, there are attacks that you could deplete all three, but there were things that you couldn't do while those um, meters would refill, which is, um, it was pretty, pretty cool that it would do that because you could actually kill enemies before they even attack and stuff like that if you had used, um, the three meters separately if you um, picked a certain attack and that's something I enjoyed I would you know just decimating um, enemies like in one shot because my experience was really high I was at a high level but the graphics were just man they're horrible and I wish if this again that they could remake and redo this is it. Panzer Dragoon Saga is something that has gone up in price. I can't even, um, even like repro boxes cost a lot of money. And it's like, I just wish that they would remake this game and, and really give it um, the, the visual fidelity that it deserves. You know what I mean? It's just something that I have been wanting for years and maybe it could happen but as the original game it actually looks worse than Panzer Dragoon 1 uh, to me Panzer Dragoon 2 is the best looking Panzer game on the Saturn my all-time favorite is Orta but um this one is not as visually appealing as the first two on the Saturn but it actually does play a lot better. It is a different genre. The first two are shooters, as everybody knows. But um, man, if that, if there's a game that really that really needed a re a remix, it's this one. But um, I guess yeah, I I don't have any other games. But um, if anybody has any suggestions, let us know. Um, you know, take it away, lightsaber samurai. Okay, and for my last game, we are heading over to the PlayStation 3. Again, another hidden gem for the system. I was going to save this uh, until a hidden gems episode for PlayStation 3 uh, that's coming up, by the way. But I couldn't hold it. This game, in my opinion, the Dead to Right series, and it came to the PlayStation 3 and the, the uh, 360 and Dead to Right's Retribution. This is a game that kind of fell under the radar. I think people just stopped playing the series after Dead to Rights 2, but this one is a really good game in the series. Uh, I really like the variety of gameplay styles all wrapped up in one. So um, it's basically at its heart, it's a third person 
first-person shooter, but there's a lot of beat em up and fighting elements in it. The uh, the hand-to-hand -hand combat system is pretty well fleshed out, so uh, you can counter incoming attacks, and you've got a nice little dodge to dodge attacks and a plethora of combos you got throws uh you can take enemies prisoner and kind of you know hold them in submission things like that so a lot of versatility in the hand-to-hand -hand combat um the shooting feels pretty good too uh as a shooter it kind of works primarily as a cover-based shooter if you want to play it that way um levels are designed that way so you uh can dodge dodge and duck behind low cover and pop up and take pot shots things like that if you want to go in guns blazing as long as you're accurate enough i think you can do it um without instantly dying uh actually he can take quite a bit of damage uh before he you know goes down and you know the vampire health is in, is in effect so he can uh recover quite quickly uh again the the achilles heel of this game is the graphics graphics look really bad this looks like a a really sharp original xbox game the weather effects in the rain are terrible and basic super drab co colors again i think to hide a lot of the technical limitations that being said the art style i do like the art style of the city it kind of reminds me of um batman arkham city if you can believe that but again just a bastardized version of it the graphics are not very good at all the animations are kind of stiff and the animations aren't well done uh and the voice acting is kind of meh but again just looking at the core elements the fighting of it um the shooting of it playing a shadow the dog and his kind of stealth elements and even when you take control of the dog it's fun to run up on people and rip their throats out like um during gameplay when you're playing as the uh, i think his name is nick i can't remember but when you're playing as the cop you can sick your dog on people you can have them growl and you can have them speak loudly to kind of intimidate enemies before you engage in battle things like that so they thought of a lot of cool ideas is just unfortunately the production values weren't up the snuff and it just seems like maybe they just didn't have the budget to really make this game great but again that shouldn't stop you from picking this up this is a super cheap five dollar game um that may rise in price someday but honestly with this one i highly doubt it i think most people are just going to continue to pass this one by but their loss is your gain if you see dead to rights go ahead and give it a spin okay guys so i do believe that's all i got for you but let's talk about it in the comment section below questions comments concerns threats what are some games uh that you think are really good but just have poor graphics again uh crew mr cruz with the winner is you thank you for collabing with me on this had a lot of fun discussing this with you uh in the chat and coming up with some games to talk about again links in the description below for his channel please go ahead and head over there give him a sub he's got some really great content on his channel but if that's it then i do believe that's all i got for you guys lightsaber samurai out and peace